Hello everyone. In this lecture today, I'm going to talk to you about Hardy-Weinberg principle and how to use Hardy-Weinberg principle to determine allele frequency and gene frequency. Gene frequency. So I'm going to also um, in this video solve uh, some problems from Hardy-Weinberg principle. Okay. So first, let's go. What is this principle? The Hardy-Weinberg principle, also referred to as Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is a set of fiber junctions uh, which when satisfied can be used for the determination of allele and genotype frequencies of a population. Okay, allele frequency and genotype frequency of a population. So what is the principle? The principle was dis discovered by um, Hardy and Wilhelm Weinberg in 1908 based on Gregor Mendel's law of segregation. segregation this principle is used to determine the frequency of alleles and genotypes of a certain population. There, there, is, there are two simple formulas that can be used to determine these allele and uh, genotype frequencies. Okay, so what is this Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium? It's, it's a principle that states that genetic variation in a, in a population will remain constant from one generation to the next in the absence of disturbing, disturbing factors. I said that the Hardy-Weinberg principle, there are um, five assumptions and what are those assumptions that I am going to talk in the next slide. So the assumptions of Hardy-Weinberg principle are point number one is no natural selection. So there should not be evolutionary pressures which, which may favor a particular allele. Okay, So it, there should be no natural selection. And point number two is there should be random mating. So each individual in a population mates randomly so that the mating with an individual carrying a particular allele is not favored. Okay, so random mating there must be, there must, must not be any natural selection and there must not be any mutations, so no mutations. That means that there are no DNA mutations occurring for the alleles which may affect their function. And it should be close population, which means that individuals within the population do not leave or new individuals are not introduced to the population. So the population must be also closed. And the last assumption is that uh, the population, population size should be large. The population is considered large enough at best infinite so that the major changes in the allele frequency do not cause a genetic drift. Okay. So if any of these assumptions are not satisfied, then the principle cannot be applied okay so this is this is really important okay so um, in the examination in the competitive examination especially you might be asked question like what are you know like which one of the following is the assumption or is not the assumption of hardy one group principle like that so you should rem rem remember these five points no natural selection random mating no mutations closed population and large population si population size Okay, so these are the five assumptions. So now, how then we determine allele frequency? Okay, so first, Hardy-Weinberg equation is P plus Q is equal to one. So this here, this equation can be used to determine the frequency of alleles in a, in a population. So uh, what is an allele? So each, each gene has two alleles. Okay, for diploid organisms, let's say for humans. So one from, sorry, one from mother and the other from the father. So basically, so that means that, okay, let's say that these alleles are denoted as dominant allele will be denoted as let's say capital A and the recessive as small a. So these are represented as P and Q in the equation below, okay? So in, in, in a population, the combined frequency of both the alleles must be equal to one or 100%, okay? So basically the frequency of, sorry, frequency of dominant allele plus frequency of recessive allele will always be equal to 1, okay, provided the, all the factors that I mentioned before are satisfied. So then frequency of dominant allele and frequency of recessive allele, okay. So I'm just going to give you here some uh, concept on, so uh, let me just make it to the pen, yeah, okay, so I'm just going to give you here some concept that I said, okay, for let's say that for height, okay, in each individual, uh, let's say for, not for height, let's say that for eye color, okay, eye color, okay, for eye color, we have 
uh, for each individual has you know like two alleles one is capital B that is referring to brown which is dominant one and another is small b which is referring to blue which is recessive allele so this gene gene for okay so gene for eye color okay eye color right gene for eye color it has two alleles okay allele capital b referring to brown and small b referring to blue okay so so this this is allele and the total fre frequency of these two alleles uh, will um, the sum of frequency of these two alleles will always be equal to one okay this is the first rule of hardy weinberg okay this is for dominant allele for example capital b is the dominant and small b is the recessive so the frequency of this capital b and plus frequency of small b will always be equal to one okay so I will give you an example of a problem and then we will try to use this equation that I discussed uh, just before. So let's say that in a population there are two alleles for each uh, for ear shape having detached lobes, okay, dominant, detached lobes, uh, dominant A or having attached lobes, uh, recessive A. So to determine the allele frequency of the recessive allele A attached lobes given the frequency of dominant allele is 73% okay so now so uh, let's work on this problem the solution of this problem is okay first what has been given to us what we know we know the frequency of dominant allele right so you first let's write this equation p plus q is equal to one here this p refers to frequency of dominant allele and q refers to this is frequency of dominant allele yes dominant allele this is frequency okay and this one is the frequency of uh, recessive allele okay recessive allele okay right so as total sum is one okay so this is the equation equation right so what has been given to us we have been given the determine the allele frequency of the recessive allele so we have to determine the frequency of recessive allele that means that we have to determine q okay q is what but what is the value of p the frequency of dominant allele the frequency of dominant allele capital a which has been sh shown here as capital a is 73 percent so basically the value of p that is the frequency of dominant allele is 73 percent okay so for this equation we will write 73 percent as 0.73 basically 73 divided by 100 okay so this is uh, 0 0.73 so then what will be the frequency of uh, our recessive allele so the frequency of our recessive allele will be uh, uh, so frequency of recessive allele that is small a that will be what okay so the so we have what is the value of p so p plus q equals to 1 this is our equation and for p we have 0 0.73 and plus q equals to 1 and so q will be 1 minus 0 0.73 which is okay 0 0.27 okay so this is the frequency of recessive allele okay so this is how we can calculate the frequency of recessive or the dominant allele using this equation okay so this p plus q equals to 1 so this equation okay you must remember that this equation is used to used to calculate allele frequency okay what for what purpose allele frequency okay okay allele frequency so to calculate allele frequency we use this equation okay so now we solve this problem now moving to the another part of uh, this this principle so hardy weinberg equation so to determine the xenotype frequency the hardy weinberg equation that is used is p, p square plus 2pq plus q square equals to 1 so you might be wondering how this equation came okay so in from from our previous um, example and also the previous explanation you know that p plus q equals to 1 okay 
if you square both the sides so let's say p plus q okay square equals to 1 square so it will be p square plus 2 p q plus q square equals to 1 so this is how this equa equation came okay so what does this p, sh p, p square represents it represents homozygous dominant genotype okay a a and 2 p q it represents the frequency okay all, all this is frequency you must remember not only homozygous the frequency of homozygous and the q is q square it represents the frequency of heterozygous genotype okay sorry 2 p q 2 p q okay frequency of heterozygous genotype and q square okay this one it represents the frequency of homozygous recessive genotype the, the sum of all these three genotypes the sum of these three genotypes frequency okay i forgot to write it here frequency okay the sum of the frequencies will always be one or must be equal to one or hundred percent okay so this this equation of hardy weinberg uh, is used to determine genotype frequency okay so now uh, to the problem again so determine the genotype frequency of a homozygous dominant capital a a allele for having detached lobes given the frequency of attached lobe is uh, attached lobe a a phenotype is this six percent and also determine the frequency of heterozygous genotype right so here they have asked us to in question number one let's let's first solve question number one okay so sorry so question number one what is question number one we have in question number one what we have is that uh, we have to determine what we have to determine okay determine the frequency the genotype frequency of homozygous dominant okay that means let's first write the hardy weinberg equation so sorry so it's basically p square plus 2 p q plus q square equals to 1 so we have to determine this p square determine the homozygous dominant frequency of homozygous dominant so we have to determine this p square value so what has been given we have been given the frequency of attached lobes a a is six percent okay so basically frequency of recessive genotype is uh, is six percent so then which means that the q square q square is six percent which can be written as six percent which can be written as six divided by hundred or uh, zero point zero six okay this is how we can write q uh, right so this is the value of q okay so uh, zero point zero six uh, yeah six percent so this is the value of q squared sorry so then we have here q square which is uh, zero point zero six and from here we can calculate q q will be root over 0 0.06 okay so and uh, now we have this uh, value uh, root 0 0.06 and from here we have what will okay so you can use the calculator to determine what this value will be okay so okay from here we got the value of q okay and so when we have the value of q from our previous hardy weinberg equation uh, to determine allele frequency we can determine the frequency of p only okay so we know that p plus q is equal to one okay so then here p we have to determine p and for q we have root over 0 0.06 equals to one and so p will be 1 minus root over 0 0.06 okay you can use the calculator to determine you know what exactly the number will be here okay i i don't have a calculation now so i will just leave you guys to determine what this value will be right so from here we can find out uh, okay we have p so so then we can calculate p squared so p squared will be you know just the square of this value 1 minus root over 0 0.06 square okay right so and then we will get the value of p square from here 
okay from here we have okay value of p square and here we already have value of q square right so uh, p square okay determine the genotype frequency homozygous dominant so this p square okay this value will be the homozygous dominant right so a a so this is for homozygous dominant p square value will be this will be the answer for question number one okay and to solve question number two okay to solve question number two also determine the uh, frequency of heterozygous genotype so the frequency of heterozygous genotype is what so from this equation this this 2pq refers to frequency of heterozygous genotype so we we have a value of q and we also have a value of p then we can already determine the frequency of heterozygous genotype so basically which is 2pq that is equals to 2 and for the value of p we have this uh, 1 minus root over uh, 0 0.06 you can simplify this guys and into q uh, the value of q we have here is root 0 0.06 okay root uh, uh, 0 0.06 yes from this you will get one number and just write that one so this is the frequency of heterozygous genotype okay so this is how sorry this is how we can use hardy weinberg e equation to determine allele frequency and genotype frequency just remember two equations okay the most important things for you guys to remember are two equations equation one is p plus q equals to one this this equation can be used to determine allele frequency and another equation is uh, p square plus 2pq plus q square equals to 1. This equation can be used to determine genotype frequency. I hope this video was helpful. Please like this video, share the video and subscribe our channel for more contents like this. Thank you very much for your kind attention.